Uh, now I'm sharing. I hope you can see. Can you see this one now? Uh, so, so okay. So you all can see, yeah. All right, that's good. Sorry, uh, because I was sharing initially before you came in, and I did, I did realize that I already gone out. Uh, so because I was trying to check uh, initially whether I can share or not, and I can share, and now, okay, I, it's okay. So we go back. Um, so we go back to this one. Uh, as as, uh, as the previous uh, notes, if you read it carefully, uh, you should be able to follow it because it's supposed to be self-explanatory. So you can uh, easily understand what we are trying to uh, convey in these notes. Okay, but uh, anyway, I'll just uh, go through just to explain again. So the introduction just want to show the importance of ship stability here. Yeah? Ship stability because mainly the whole of Nepal architecture class is uh, talking about stability, stability calculation. So we, we learn about uh, hydrostatics and so on. It's actually for us to be able to calculate the uh, stability of the ship. All right, so that's, uh, that's one. And then the second part is just what is stability? Okay, so stability is a tendency, ability system to return to its original condition when disturbed or displaced from its, or no, its normal equilibrium condition. It's not, it, and stability doesn't apply, apply to ship only, but uh, any system. For example, you see uh, uh, a machinery, for example, whether it's stable or not. So, so a building, whether it's stable or not. So the stability is whether it will displace or, uh, or maybe a signal, whether the signal is stable or not. Yeah. So sometimes we have a good signal uh, for our internet, right? But and then suddenly it become uh, not 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 stable because it is disrupted and so on. So, so but for as far as ship is concerned, um, ship stability is this one. Okay. The tendency of the ability of the ship to return to upright when displaced from its upright position. So when you start to push it, either you push by using wind, you blow on the side of the ship, or you pull on the side of the ship, or you want to go on the, on board a boat, you, you hold on the side of the boat. All those are things that will uh, affect the, the ability of the ship <coughs> to uh, whether it is whether uh, it is stable or not. Yeah. So. If it has a strong tendency to return to upright, then it's regarded as a stable vessel. So if a wind blow from the side, it starts to heal a little bit. But when you release the wind, it's, it come back to original. Okay, so then it's become it's a stable ship. So if it is not a very stable ship, then a small a force, a little bit of force, it start to, to, to roll and finally capsize, heal and finally capsize. So you can read that. So the analogy of the stability is uh, uh, sometimes given uh, it's like this marble, yeah. So you have a bowl. You have a bowl here. So this bowl uh, is oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, open the pen. Okay, so you have this bowl here. So you have a marble. So you put a marble here and it, it, it will swing and finally it rests in the middle. So this is like a stable ship because it has a restoring force. For this marble, it is restoring to the middle here. So same like a ship, if it is a ship, it has a restoring force. So same like a pendulum, same like a swing. So all those have a restoring position, yeah? But for this uh, marble, when it is uh, the the bowl is uh, upside down, then you put a marble, you push a little bit, then it start to roll to the side, so it's not coming back. So this is unstable condition, unstable equilibrium. Whereas this one will be uh, neutral equilibrium. Okay. My epic pen is missing. Okay. Uh, so you, so you can.
Right. Oh, no, the pen is coming. Sorry. Oh, it's not behaving very well today. Right. So uh, then we come to the topic of uh, transverse and longitudinal stability. Okay, what what do we mean by transverse and longitudinal stability? Oh dear, this epic pen is very problem now. It's not behaving very well. Okay. Have to Right. So one is longitudinal and transverse uh, um, longitudinal and transverse stability. Yeah, longitudinal transverse stability are two ways of looking at the ship. So you look from when we say about transverse stability, you look from the ship from front, from the front of the ship, looking towards the ship. So you can see the shape is normally like this. Yeah. So you see the ship. So this is typical transversibility. We look at the ship healing from uh, side to side to side. So the ship is healing, yeah, uh, or listing. Two terms, yeah. Okay. So from longitudinal, um, the other one is longitudinal point. Longitudinal point. The we are looking at the ship from the side so from the profile if you you remember your body plan and your lines plan you look at the profile you see the all the battle lines yeah so that if we look from that side so the ship is trimming we see whether the ship is trimming trimming up or trimming forward we calculate how much trim is it what's the draft forward what's the draft up that is long longitudinal viewpoint but our concern here in this particular chapter and also in the next chapter is the transversibility because transversibility affect the uh, safety of the ship. So you read these notes, it talks about uh, um, the effect yeah, of uh, ship on the, the, the effect of the, 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 the angle of hill and leaf and it's consequent on the safety of the boat. So this is uh, very important. Yeah? from a transfer stability point of view. So after this, we are not going to mention any more about longitudinal stability until we go to chapter six, which is in the naval architecture two. So you can forget about, uh, about uh, longitudinal stability. Uh, after this, everything that we're going to say in this chapter, we are only dealing with transfer stability. So stability from side to side, from port to starboard, uh, healing of the ship, yeah? So that's that's what we're talking about in this. Uh, so, so you can read this, what it means, what is least, what is heal, yeah, uh, and so on. So this chapter, as you say here, this chapter will focus on basic transversibility, particularly relationship between the centers, integrity, and this friendship stability. Further transversibility will be in the next chapter, chapter five, and also learning disability is I think in chapter not chapter seven, it's chapter six. Yeah, so. Like that. So, here we deal with basic initial transversibility. We can add here transverse. And the important part that we want to show here is the role of GM. Why GM is so important? Sometimes you see a ship, people say this ship is not stable, the GM is small. Okay? Or you look at the ship GM, you know that the ship is not stable. Why? So this figure is explaining uh, the part, okay? This is the relationship that is very important. So we have the keel. This, this keel is supposed to be this point, yeah? This point is supposed to be a bit further up a little bit. Yeah, it, says, it has moved actually. All the points has moved. Oh, the whole thing is moving. Okay, tapa. Uh, so we, we have this is the keel. 
And this is center of buoyancy, this is center of gravity, and this is meta center. So meta center is a point uh, where the line of action of buoyancy will be passing through. Even when it is the ship is still like this, the line of action of buoyancy will still go to the meta center. So meta center is like uh, a center from where the B is rotating around. Yeah, so, so as the ship uh, heel to one side, the center of buoyancy move because the center volume move to the right. So still the buoyancy acts vertically upward and it goes through the meta center. So it is very important. MT, meta center is very important. And here we are talking about MT, yeah, transverse meta center. Uh, so the relationship between K, B, G, and MT will explain, will give you the, uh, the, the, the state of the stability of the ship. For example, uh, you see the one on the right here. If a typical one, K, B, G, M, originally like this. If a wind blows from here, for example, okay, or somebody pull the... Um, what if this is a boat so somebody in the water want to go up so it's pulling the, the boat like this then the center of buoyancy of the ship will go to this point originally is here because it's center of this volume it moved to this point which is the cent new center volume because most of the volume is on the right now so the center volume goes here so it has a line of action of buoyancy going through up there through mt while the center of weight is always going through g Okay, in it, where it doesn't matter what uh, how the ship is, the center of weight is always going through G. So the, the the force of the weight is going through G. So these two forces will form a couple, yeah, a moment that will ride the the vessel, ride the vessel. So the, there's a there's a couple here. This line. Okay, later we'll see that this is what we call as GZ, the the distance with G and this point, later we'll see, but it's not important now. The main thing what we want to know is that there is a clock, a counterclockwise uh, moment trying to ride the ship. There is a clockwise moment trying to capsize the ship, but there is a clockwise moment riding the ship. So they are fighting, yeah? If this moment, the counterclockwise moment, uh, the clockwise moment is removed, then the ship, this moment will win and will bring it to upright. If the clockwise moment is bigger than the moment given by this, by this, uh, by this uh, forces from buoyancy and gravity, then the ship will capsize. So at the moment, if so you see that this line uh, is very important. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you can read the explanation here. Right? The, the explanation that I explained just now is given in these two paragraphs. So see, we see that since G is above, uh, M is above G, the moment, somebody wants to come in. Okay. Yeah. See, so the moment is count is counterclockwise. Imagine if M is below G, or G goes up here, for example, for certain reason, G is above here. Then you see that there is a moment from weight coming down, a moment of buoyancy going up. So the the moment because it that is given by these two is also clockwise, which will help in capsizing the ship. So that's why the position of G is very important in the ship we must okay in this case m was originally above g and we can see the writing moment is positive if ship is unstable if m was below g that is gm is negative the writing moment will be negative hence the ship is unstable if m is at g then ship is neutral so so m if below g gm is negative yes you can see uh, just now, if M is below G, then GM is negative because GM is KG 
sorry, Km minus Kg. So if M is here, Km is small, minus Kg become negative. So you can watch these uh, two videos, which I explain about Meta Center, right? It's a four minutes and the, the longer one is 22 minutes, right? So the writing moment, that, that counterclockwise moment that I've shown just now is the real indication of stability. The ability of the ship to return to oppose uh, any capsizing moment and return to the ship in upright position. The larger the writing moment, the better the stability is. So, uh, and this is how that writing moment is shown. The G just now, as I said, that distance is called GZ. The distance from G to this, to, to this point is GZ. This is line of action of buoyancy. Okay, and this is action of weight. Weight is equal to displacement, so the symbol is still the same. And buoyancy is still the same. So these two are the same because they are in equilibrium. This is weight, this is buoyancy. The between you the same symbol because they are the same quantity. Okay, same buoyancy and weight is always the same. So because of that, you have F going up, F going down. So that's why you have the writing moment or the couple. And in this triangle, GZ is GMT sine phi. Sine phi phi is the angle of hill here. That which the ship is now reclining, inclining to, inclined to phi. So for any displacement, the writing moment only depends on gz because writing moment is delta times gmt sine phi so if there is single displa uh, any displacement if the weight is not changing the total weight of the ship is not changing then the G the writing moment depends on gz and gz depends on gm because gz is gmt sine phi so the bigger the value of gz the bigger will be the writing moment and since gz is a function of gmt the bigger GMT will lead to larger GZ, bigger writing moment, and hence better stability. So, it is very essential. This one is you as naval architect. You must make sure that your ship will have large enough GM to ensure that it has enough writing moment to overcome external moment. So, any external moment that comes, it must be uh, countered by this writing moment. And the writing moment depends on GZ. And GZ depends on GMT. So if you have zero GMT, for example, then you have zero GZ. There's no fighting moment or counteracting moment. If GMT is negative, then you have negative GZ, the negative writing moment. And because of that, it, it will capsize the ship. So this is a very important part of uh, the lesson that we learned here. Eh? And then this part is what uh, I think yesterday. Uh, Hanani Shep, I think this part, which shows the relationship between K, B, G, and M. So K, maybe we can say this is Johor Bahru, this is Malacca, this is Seremban, this is Kuala Lumpur. Yeah? So to go to, from Johor Bahru to Kuala Lumpur, we can go to Malacca, the distance uh, Johor Bahru to Malacca, or, and added to Malacca to Kuala Lumpur, or uh, Johor Bahru to Seremban and Seremban to Kuala Lumpur. Okay, so these are the two part that we show here. Okay, to go from K to MT, you can add KB to BMT, or you can add KG to GMT. So if you equate these two together, then KB plus BMT is equal to KG plus GMT, and which means that you can get if you know KB, you know B B B M. When you know KG, you can get GMT or either way. How do you get KB and BMT? You get from hydrostatic particulars. Yeah, for any particular draft or displacement, K, uh, the metal center are fixed. Therefore, the values of KB and BMT and hence KMT are fixed as can be obtained from hydrostatic particulars. So this is fixed for any draft. You have one draft, you know KMT and KB and BMT because you know how to set it particulars. Okay? But KG will depend on how the ship weight is distributed. So, the distance GMT, okay, will only depend on the height of center of gravity. So, if you know GMT, GMT is KMT minus KG, right? Whereas KMT is already fixed here. 
So that means that GMT will depend on kg. In other words, you can control kg, we can also control GMT and hence ship stability. Yeah. The low the lower the centrifugality, the larger will be GMT. And conversely, a higher value of kg may lead to smaller or even negative GMT, which means unstable ship. So we don't want kg to be higher than GMT, uh, than, than KMT. Yeah, if, if kg is bigger than KMT, then GMT will be negative. If kg is equal to GM, uh, to, to KMT, then GMT will be zero. Yeah, so we this formula is very important. Yeah. So this is fixed because it is hydrostatic particulars. And this one is depend on the weight distribution. And then there is a note here. I keep putting MT, MT here to show that this is transfer. We are, we are dealing stability in the transverse direction. But later, uh, I don't use anymore the, the, the T, subscript T. Because normally, we deal with uh, stability, uh, I mean, meta center, normally when uh, we deal with transfer stability. So that means that you later when we, we talk about KM or we talk about GM and so on, it is normally, maybe 90% of the cases, we are referring to transfer stability. So if we, even if you don't put the trust subscript T also, you understand that we are talking about MT. Okay, so let's say we just say GM or you can say just KM, it means uh, BM, it means that we are talking about BMT, KMT, and GMT. Okay, because very rare for us to look for ML, BML, GML. If we're talking about longitudinal, then definitely we need to put L, uh, the subscript. Uh, later, because in chapter six, we are looking at longitudinal stability. Then there we have the, the M, if there is, exists, we have to use uh, L as a subscript. Okay. So like this, for example, when I talk about GM here, there's no more T there. It means we are talking about transversibility. Right. So uh, as we said earlier, if we can control the stability, uh, the, the center of gravity, we can control GM. I mean, if we can bring the, G, the KG low, then GM is safe. It says uh, good, good, yeah? So the center of gravity of the ship, this one is a question in the quiz. The center of gravity of the ship will remain unchanged except under two conditions. One, weight are added or removed from the ship at location not coinciding with the original center of gravity. If you have a, a um, if you have a block of wood, yeah, you have a center of gravity in the center of it, yeah. So if you add weight at that center, then the, it will not change. Uh, the center of gravity or we have a ship if you you add the weight at each center of gravity it will not change the the the, the center of gravity but if you add above or below the center of gravity then the center of gravity will move the other one that uh, it can uh, change is if weight already on board are shifted causing changes in moment about the center of gravity so the effect of addition removal of weight on the centrality can be calculated using fundamental concept centroid and composite body. The concept is given in appendix A. The table method described in A can be applied directly when considering the net gravity and so on. So if you go to appendix A, I go very quickly to here, this one. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I will not be, this one, as I say, this is appendix A. Eh? So uh, this is how the basic idea, if you have an uh, area or volume or weights, you want to find the composite body, you add the moment together and you can get the centrality. So you use a table like this. So that's the basic formula, but you use a table like this. For example, you have this, these are the areas, yeah? This area one, area two, area, area one, area two, area three, and then the, and then uh, you want to find the, the center of this whole area, then you can find by using this table. The component, area, distance, moment. So finally, you get the, the center of you have the final moment to be like that. And you can get how many meters is this. You can try this. And then uh, you can, uh, this is volume, same thing. Okay, to find KB and LCB of the component of the ship, 
of this uh, trimaran, the main hull, the side hull, and the side hull. So you can try this exercise. Okay. And then if you have uh, uh, bl three blocks, weights, three kilogram, two kilogram. So you have three kilogram, two kilogram, and two kilogram. You stack together, can you find the composite center of gravity? So this is, uh, you can you can try to, to do this inside this table. Okay. And then uh, here it talks about movement of weight. If you move weight from here, this weight is moved in this direction at distant y, then the center of gravity move uh, like this, gg dash is m times y divided by m, which is the total mass. If weight is removed, the remaining uh, moment of center of gravity is gg dash is m times d, uh, the weight times the distance, divided by m minus m. Okay, so this is uh, uh, when it is uh, removed, okay, when it is added, then m plus m, which is the final weight. All right. So, okay. So, we go back to our actual uh, ship here. So, just a very simple example. Can we find the shift in center gravity of the ship if a weight, two ton already on board, is moved three meters from port to starboard? Find the shift in center gravity. So from that formula in appendix uh, B, G, G dash is weight move times distance times divided by ship displacement. Yeah, so anything, if you move anything on the, um, on, on any, anybody, on any object, even in the car. So if a passenger move from uh, one point, uh, one, one seat to another, the center of gravity of the car will move. And to calculate the center of gravity move is you can just calculate like this. Yeah, same. Uh, car or air, aircraft or any any object. All right, so that's uh, uh, the example. And then we have this uh, example. A ship weighing 7,000 tons is floating at the wharf. Uh, at that time, KM is 6.5, GM 0.45. Uh, 30 times loaded, so find the new GM. So we can uh, do. Why? No, 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 no. I have, so it should be here first. Eh? Sorry, sorry. This one, this one. Okay. Example 4.1. Okay. So if we have a ship weighs 2000 tons, kg is this one. So one cargo 300 tons was unloaded. Unloaded means it's minus, and another 500 times is loaded at kg 2.5. Find the final kg. So this is similar to the example in Appendix A, eh, where we have the original ship, 2000, kg 5.5, and then you unload the cargo number one, minus 300, kg 7.6, load cargo number two, 500, kg 2.5. You get the moment. This times this, you get this. This times this, you get this moment. Yeah, weight times kg. So you get that. And then you sum up together and you sum up the weight. So you get the final kg of the ship to be just total moment divided by total weight. Okay. So the same thing, example 4.2 is very similar, except it has a bit more, many more cargo loaded and unloaded. Okay, so this is construct the loading table. The same thing, original ship, you don't forget the original ship. Yeah? Original ship is kg, so, so the moment is weight times kg, you get that. And then you add, 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 and, find, and then you minus this one because this is minus, so you get minus something here. So you get total moment about kill and total weight. So final kg, which is final center of gravity above kill, okay, kg is center of gravity above kill, is divide this total moment divide by the total weight yeah total weight is total displacement same sometimes we use a displacement sometimes we take weight yes yeah? so because weight and displacement will be the same uh, and we use a unit of tons yeah okay so so you can get the final kg and if it says that the km is 
7.3 after loading. It says find the, what is the final GM. Then just take the KM minus the KG here. Sorry, minus this KG here. And we get the answer, the final GM. So this is a very uh, simple example of actual calculation that that captain will do about a ship. You load this, you load this, load this, and finally you see what is my, my final kg. And then what is my final km? I can find from 130 particulars. And then I minus that uh, kg, so I got my gm. So my gm is okay. Then, uh, oh, somebody is joining. Okay, and uh, with that, uh, we can get the final gm. So this is, although this example is very simple, but this is real, eh, very realistic. Okay, uh, and then this exercise uh, is a bit uh, challenging, okay, in a sense. A boat shaped barge is floating in seawater at draft for 5 meter, extreme dimensions, uh, this one. Okay, uh, so if it is up to there, that's question number one and number two. Number one and number two, on, you need only this information. Okay, this information is actually for this, this uh, number one, number two. It says calculate displacement KB, BMT, KMT, and GMT of the empty batch. Uh, sorry, you need this one as well, the, 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 the centigrade. Only this one you don't need. Uh, I think I, 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 I put this one a bit last here, uh, like that. Okay. So you need this information to do question number one. So use your knowledge of uh, from the end of chapter two to do the calculation of KMT. You can calculate KB for the batch. Okay, KB is half because it is a box. Uh, BMT you can calculate from your moment second moment area. KMT is just KB plus BMT, and GMT is KMT minus KG for meter. Okay, so you can get number one. Number two, the bus used to carry mud. Okay. So you can find how much mud is going to be carried. It's weight. So you find new maximum displacement of the draft. Initially, now it's floating at 5 meter. If you want it to float at 7.5 meter, it has a new displacement. You can calculate that new displacement by using K L times B times the new draft. So the difference is the amount of weight added okay but the question says what is the maximum volume of the mud that can be loaded right the mud density is 1500 so you need to uh, use uh, density of mud find volume by using mud density okay so you should be able to do that and then for the last one uh, you need this information about the wall the wall of uh, and floor uh, 0 0.5 thickness yeah why you need that i think i need this one now I need a pen. Right. Uh, okay. So you see, this is a, this is a box. It has an inner dimension. Uh, that's what that's what it's saying here. The wall and floor are zero point five. So this one is zero point five. Uh, okay. So this is zero point five. Zero point five meter. So the, the, the mud will be here. So you have to have your own Im imagination to find what is the, uh, you know the volume of the mud here, okay? So how much is that mud going to, to stay here and what's the height of this mud here? You should, you should be able to calculate this. All right, so this is a higher level, uh, <laughs> a bit, uh, uh, higher level, um, kebat sikit, kebat, yeah? It's a kebat. The calculation 
how to calculate this uh, depth. So, if you know the, the, the depth of this mud, then the center of gravity of this mud is somewhere here. So, you know the center of gravity. Okay, which is the center of the mud. So, 0 0.5 plus half of this mud depth. So, you can use the table to calculate the GMT. The question here is to for to have the GMT because you can calculate kg using example 4.1 exactly like example 4.1 okay which is which is this one original ship and only one cargo loaded original batch you know it's kg and you put the cargo the new cargo you know it's weight and you know it's kg so you can calculate the total minimum divided by the total weight and you can get the uh, kg and finally you can calculate the mp right so that is 4.6 and say 4.5 uh and then uh, that is a uh, uh, for, for this one is using appendix b yeah about movement of weight or addition of weight or center uh, on the center of gravity as we explained just now if uh, you move weight on board the ship you can get its center of gravity yeah when portion of weight or, or area or volumes are moved uh, added or removed added or removed the overall center of the object will also move the basic concept is like in appendix b so you try to understand what's happening in appendix b okay uh, this is appendix b um, b so for the shift as well, it's the same thing. You want to find the shift of center gravity, you can calculate using the same method. Yeah. Also, you can find the the the, the shift in the center gravity because of adding or removal of weight by using the same method. So this is a, a patua tips how to find the, the the direction of the movement of change in the the center gravity. What we mean is Okay, so it means a bit longer this one. Uh, so if this is a ship, so if this is a ship, okay, uh, its center gravity is here. So this is G initially. Uh, so if you add a weight here. Sorry, in, we are not talking about weight. Uh, we are talk, not talking about at weight. Eh? It's about weight moving. Uh, sorry, direction. Movement of weight. Okay. So there are many, many cargo here. So you have cargo here, cargo here, cargo here. Okay. So you take this cargo and move up to here. You can find there the movement that G will move up. Uh, sorry. I need to... Okay, so if you move the weight uh, from here to here, then G will move from here to here, and the distance move is given by uh the formula that is in appendix b which is the the weight move times the distance move divided by the total volume or the total weight of the ship yeah the weight move times d if this uh, is the distance d or h if this is d so this is w so w times d divided by displacement but the direction is given by this uh, formula or this uh, this uh, principle. When weights are shifted transversely on board the ship, the moment change in the port direction causing the the center of gravity shift. So, uh, it shift the shift is along the uh, the the direction. Okay, the direction is parallel to parallel to the shift of gg dash so so this is g gg dash so it move 
this is the 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 direction of movement of the weight so this is also the direction of movement of the weight okay so when the weight is removed then for example you remove this weight here there's a weight here and you remove then we says that the g when weight is added, uh, so when the weight is removed the center of gravity will shift in the direction away from the point at which the weight is removed so if you remove weight here throw this one out then the weight the center of gravity will move in this direction away from that point if you add a weight so you add weight here for example if this is g the original g then the weight where the center of gravity will move towards the weight so in that direction so this will be the new g so that's what this thing is talking talking about okay so the, then we can see the example here uh, i think i cancel that but there okay so we go to example 4.3 uh this is an example just now as i said the shift center gravity is weight move times distance divided by shift displacement oh this one is supposed to be 50. you get 0 0.12 okay uh and and then this example is um a ship 7000 tons is floating at the time is K, km is uh, 6.5 gm 0.5 and so on by considering the shift in center of gravity find new gm so uh, there are two ways of doing it one is either by using this uh, shift in center of gravity method okay uh and uh, sorry this one can be removed <laughs> i need to send a new new updated version yeah uh, and this is method two method two is like the uh, original tab uh, method uh, three uh, four point one and four point two just you basically what he asks here is there is a, a sheet floating like this and then uh this this way is loaded Okay, then you can uh, just find what is the new GM. Yeah, so just find fi what is the final kg and find the GM by taking KM minus kg. Okay. The second last uh, topic is about hanging weights, use of derricks and cranes. Yeah. And uh, you can watch this video seven minutes uh, in youtube to uh, understand this but also this is also being explained here when a weight is uh, okay suspended weight are assumed to act at the point of suspension therefore weight that was initially located on the lower deck for example will instantly be transferred to the point of suspension at the instance the weight is lifted off the deck by the derrick Okay, so the center of gravity will suddenly increase, and because KM is constant, GM will reduce. So you can you can you can uh, read this. So what happened is, if uh, a weight is being lifted, for for example, the weight is on the deck, and the crane, the ship crane is lifting, and which is high up. When the the weight is lifted from the deck, the weight is suddenly as if the 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 weight is transferred to the uh, point of suspension okay so if this is the direct right so this way is on board the ship yeah it's taking take so this is a crane ship ship direct so there's a this is a bottom of the the hole here so if it is lifting up then this way is actually as if that it is here at this point yeah so that is going up very very fast as if now uh, if the weight goes up there very fast so the g will also move very fast there and g movement g is weight times the distance move okay divided by the total displacement so if this distance is very high so you have a g moving very very high up the g g dash is 
uh, quickly shifted up and if it is it goes beyond the the metal center then the ship will capsize because gm is negative or zero uh, so this is uh, this is what's being explained here okay and there's an example so you can just see the example it's a work example eh? so you can see and finally this is the last topic about free surface correction um on board ship water or any any liquid is not good for stability uh, maybe you remember about uh the malay proverb eh? peribahasa menatang minyak yang penuh you want to carry uh, oil in a dulang uh, in the in the big uh, uh, tray uh, if it is uh, flushing from side to side it will cause problem so this is what we call as free surface correction free surface effect and you can watch this uh, short uh, youtube yeah three minutes only or less than three minutes in fact what free surface is when free surface exists on board ship, stability of the ship is affected. The free surface gives rise to free surface moment, which in effect reduces GM. The reduction is called free surface correction, FSC. And to calculate FSC, you have to calculate the second moment of area of the surface of the fluid. And you divide by the ship displacement. Okay. So the free surface moment is I, second moment of area multiplied by rho of the fluid if the fluid that's sloshing or that we are considering is oil then it's rho of the foil if it is seawater it is seawater okay so i is the second moment of area of the surface liquid transverse second moment of area yeah? i put here transverse we are talking about transverse stability so if fsc is known then the reduced gm is called gm fluid the M fluid is the M solid minus free surface correction. So you can uh, read this on your own. Uh, as can be seen, uh, the presence of liquid uh, free surface effectively reduces the M and air or increase kg because it's like kg has been increased. This is very important to, to ensure that free surface is avoided or at least minimize during the design stages and while operating the ship. So when we design the ship, we must make sure that the free surface is avoided or is minimized. You cannot avoid it, you cannot remove completely because the tanks, yeah, the fuel tank, the water tank, the ballast tank, all has a liquid. So the liquid will have free surface, okay? Uh, but uh, we calculate that so that the, the by considering the free surface also the stability is still enough yeah uh, and one thing to say is that the free surface does not depend on the volume of the liquid but it depends on the free surface so if you have a, a, a tank that is full 100 percent there is no free surface then there is no problem if uh, you have a, a small tank there is only one or two centimeter of, uh, if you have a tank, there is okay, one centimeter or two centimeter of uh, liquid, th then you may have problem because of the free surface of that two or three centimeter depth of liquid. Yeah? Then this is how to calculate second moment area, which is which you learned already. But for a tank, most, most of the tank are, uh, could be rectangular or circular the free surface yeah the free surface itself uh, then we can use this kind of formula which you already learned in chapter two okay uh, and you can get the free surface collection from there and there are of course uh, these are the exercises that you can do on your own i'll be uh, producing the excel file to to, to to give the solution to this right so that's uh all for oh somebody has just joined in <laughs> okay uh shasha has just joined in so i, I open up if you have any particular questions or things you want to you want to ask 
Of course, it's a bit difficult because we, we go very quickly and uh, uh, you have not read the notes and so on. So maybe uh, next week we go we go through again and with if, if you have already undergone the the notes, then you should be you should be able to ask questions. Right now, maybe it's not not proper. Um, I don't know. Maybe you are not yet able to, to to absorb what is being said. But it is very important that you go through the notes. You read, and if you do not understand, maybe you make notes and so on. You may uh, you may ask me through WhatsApp, uh, or you can send email or WhatsApp, uh, or you can wait until the next class so that you can ask the questions. Yeah. So the main thing is uh, you follow the notes, you 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 watch the videos, the YouTube videos that I send uh, that I've uh, put the links there. Then with that, uh, you, you should be able to understand and do the exercises. If you can do all the exercises, exercises, uh, of course later I'll give you the solution. Uh, without looking at the solution, then then you are you are okay on this particular uh, chapter, yeah. Right. Any uh, questions you want to ask? If there is anything. You don't have. Okay. I go very quickly on the. All right. I go very quickly on. The notes, uh, the quiz, yeah, the quiz. So far, 11 people, people responded, okay. Uh, I hope more people will respond, even if there is no price, <laughs> okay. Uh, there is no price money. Uh, still, it's better that you can, you can, you should, you should respond, yeah. Uh, but since uh, not, not only 11 responded, I just go through with you in here, yeah. Okay, uh, question number one, hydrostatic particulars includes TPC, MCTC, CB, KG, KMT. So what's the answer here? So when we say uh, true or false, the whole statement must be true. If only part of the statement is true, even if 90% true also is considered as false. So in this case, the answer is false. Why is it false? Okay, this is the answer. All are hydrostatic particulars except kg. Okay. Hydrostatic particulars describe the characteristics of the displaced volume of the ship. Kg is not related to the displaced volume of the ship, but, but rather the center of weight. Okay, so it is uh, kg is something related. Hydrostatic particulars does not do not exist when the ship is not floating in water, but kg is always there regardless of location condition of the ship. You take the ship to Mount Everest also, it has a kg. You take the ship to uh, to the moon also, it has the same kg. So kg is not hydrostatic particulars, yeah? So hydrostatic particulars are things that are related to the shape or form of the underwater displaced volume of the ship. So remember that. Number two, BMT is distant from central buoyancy to the transverse matter center, while BML is the distance from central buoyancy to the glandular center matter center. So the statement is true. It is really that distance. So there are two matter center, there are two. Central buoyancy, there is only one. Central gravity, there is one. Okay, KB and B and LCB are uh, just defining the, the position of that one center of gravity. It's not, there, there are not two center, center of buoyancy, sorry, center buoyancy. Okay, number three, hydrostatic particulars of the ship remain the same when the ship pass, passes from fresh water to salt water, provided the ship weight remains constant. Is this true or false? The answer is false. Why? When a ship uh, of constant weight move from water of lower density water, which is the fresh water, to higher density water, 
the required displaced volume to provide buoyancy is reduced. Same weight when it goes from fresh water to salt water, it, it need less less uh, displacement, less displaced waters, less displaced volume. Yeah, same this weight displacement but less volume because it has more density. Yeah, so the draft will decrease. The ship will float less. The so the draft will be reduced. So when draft changes, the hydrostatic particulars will also change because hydrostatic particulars depend on the draft. So the statement is false. Number four, the transfer second moment initial of water plane is required to calculate BMT and MCTC. Is this correct? No, you see the notes, you can see that to calculate BMT, yes, you need the transfer second moment of initial. Okay, or moment moment of area, but to calculate MCTC, you need yeah sorry, okay. Uh, the transfer second moment is required to calculate BMT, but it is not correct that it is required to calculate MCTC, because for MCTC you need the IL, not IT, yeah, the longitudinal second moment of area. And then the bonding curves. Only curves are curves at the area up to various water line drawn at every station. So this is the correct statement. Number six, what is the transverse second moment circular water plane? This is quite easy. I think uh, most of you got it right. Just uh, pi, pi d4 over 64, yeah? Pi d4 over 64. Pi times uh, d4 over 64, no problem. Uh, what is the transfer second moment initial in question six about an axis xx located five meter uh, five meter from center point? So this is we are talking about uh, the um, theorem of parallel parallel axis theorem. So we have this is the axis xx. Okay. Uh, so we want to to know the so and this is the the circular water plane area. So the distance here is five meter, right? So first you find the I about this axis, which is this one, second moment area, and then you multiply, you add to it this area times the five square. Okay, so uh, I think you can go here. So it is ITXX, is IT, which is the original I, IT about this one, plus area times Y squared, which is this Y, is Y5 squared. So that's the question. And finally, this is, uh, this one is, similar to the exercise that we've seen in the notes just now, is to calculate KMT of a box. Yeah, to calculate the KMT of the box. Okay. The, the question is very simple. Calculate KMT of the box, uh, the box shape bash, 100 meter by 20 meter by 10 meter, floating at draft of 5 meters. So you have a box floating uh, at that draft. So you have a box. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Supposed to be a box. Right, so when it is floating and rather than the 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 the, the, the moment of in, the moment second moment of area is just a, a rectangle. So a rectangle, the second moment of area is uh, 112 times 100 times b because we are talking about t, yeah. So 100 times uh, sorry, 100 times 20 squared divided by 12 lb squared over 12, yeah. So you get the I and then divide by the volume of the circle, you get BMT. So you can calculate BMT. KB is half of the draft. So you get KMT. KMT is KB plus BMT. Right? So that's uh, that's quite easy. Yeah? And uh, you can get that. So that is basically the question. The, okay. So find the volume, find the KB. Uh, sketch the water plane area so you get the it to be this 
So BMT is IT divided by displacement and you get KMT to be that. Okay. So 